Yes, hopefully I'm live. Don't do this to me again. Yeah, it is working. Hold on, I need to put it in the Discord. Mm. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, let's put it here. So yeah, last time we had a fire and hopefully everything is fixed now and it should work. Okay, let's, let's go, let's do this. Let's light this candle. Man. Hold up. Okay, sorry. Uh, shut up. Okay, sorry. Uh, we have four minutes until this starts. So yeah, HTV, uh, yet Japanese, it launches to the ISS. Uh, it takes two days to get there. Um, what else do I need to say? Yeah, they have the new batteries for the ISS on there right now. And um, is there more? I don't have the HTV uh, HTV anymore. I brought it to the museum. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, the H two uh HTV launches on the HTB uh HTV. The H2B is the carrier rocket of the HTV. Uh, the H2V, uh, H2B is actually a just a H2 rocket, which they renamed uh, to H2A when the uh, H2B started flying. But the H2 uh, is its first first stage is basically replaced by a first stage with two engines, and it is. I believe a meter or a meter and a half and a half wider. So it fits two engines at the bottom instead of one. Uh, it has four solid rocket boosters, uh, the same as the ones on the H2A. Mm, what else? This is, well, some um, sites stated that this was the penultimate flight of the H2B, but I don't think it is the penultimate flight because the H2VX is also supposed to fly in a H2B, which is, um, this is the penultimate flight of the HTV. Um, so next flight is gonna be the HTV9 and that one is gonna be probably in a year or so. 
but that flight is going to be the last flight of the uh, HTV uh, and then it is the HTV X so they will swap around some parts I don't know exactly what they're what those are but yeah so yeah last last week it was actually first attempt of this launch but then uh three hours before the launch um or actually three hours before it was supposed to fly um yeah it was three a uh, fire broke out between the uh, three and four solid rocket boosters so that was quite an issue so they had to repair everything uh look for what happened that's the fuse already assuming yeah i know but the um, they do the same as they do with the russian launches which is they somehow film a screen and then upload that so the quality of the nasa stream is uh way lower than it should be so that's why i choose to actually watch the official japanese launch stream and mostly there is a english narrator so yeah and otherwise i'm here with quite a lot of knowledge so but I, I do know NASA TV does this too, but I want it from the source itself. And last time it was pretty, pretty good. So if they do start streaming right now. Come on. Yeah, one thing I don't like is um, YouTube is basically forcing me to use the beta thing they have happening, but I think it's awful. It works. It doesn't work like the old system used to work. Uh, my OBS is not really connecting like I wanted to. So yeah, it just sucks. But we're going, hopefully. And I feel like I need to check Twitter. Well, I'm going to head over to NASA TV really shortly. If they don't start streaming. In a different form of communications um, and, and cooling that is provided by an EFU adapter. There we go. This will be sort of a demonstration for future technology that can be used for broadband data communication in space. Now there's experiments for um, biological experiments as well as hardware for data and communications. Another experiment called Hourglass will be un will be investigating uh, the relationship between gravity and the behavior of granular materials such as regolith that covers the surface of planets and planetary-like bodies. The Hourglass facility is uh, armed with a high-definition camera that'll take record video at 30 frames per second and see how these different materials, these different regoliths, move in the microgravity environment. For those of you just joining, you're getting a live view of the Oshinubu Launch Complex. Sitting at Site 2 is the H-2B Launch Vehicle, and on top, HTV-8 as the H-2 Transfer Vehicle. We're counting down to a launch in just about 16 minutes, 11.05.05 a.m. Central Time today. So yeah, I uh, made 
a model of this uh, last year actually for the last launch and I don't have it with me at the moment which is too bad I, I should have had it but I don't have it at the moment um, yeah the Japanese rockets are quite powerful actually for what they they are they're quite under underestimated underrated what you would call it but they um, they quite they pack a punch they have quite a lot of thrust and I believe the HTV is close to 15 tons so 15 tons to lower Earth orbit is quite a lot I think it is comparable to the Delta 4 medium Oh, that's the long countdown. <laughs> At the Yoshinobu launch complex, the weather itself looking good. Again, everything on track for a launch on time at 11.05 Central, 1.05 a.m. Japan time out at the launch complex. It's about uh, 73 degrees Fahrenheit, partly cloudy, uh, just shy of 23 degrees centigrade. A nice cooler afternoon and clear skies for the launch today. Again, at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be uh, flying right over the middle of Africa. Now just east of the coast of South America. Just okay, on the southern so border Japanese. of Brazil, making its way on a northeastern track toward the African continent. Yeah. This will put the HTV and the International Space Station in the proper phasing, where the HTV will meet the International Space Station this Saturday. On We're looking Saturday. at our capture time. Uh, oh, on Saturday, yeah, that's about because. 6 15 a.m. Central Time. Because in tomorrow morning, there is. Uh, tomorrow. At least tomorrow, I don't know what time. Tomorrow, there's going to be a Soyuz launch. So they can't, uh, they, they have a, a, a window which is reserved for the Soyuz. So that's why it docks on Saturday because they need to, need it to go, uh, like they have to wait and then probably some solar angle thing. So yeah. Now, the launch of HTV today on September 24th comes just one day before the launch of a new crew to the International Space Station. Currently, six crew members aboard the International Space Station, but by the time HTV arrives this, fr this Saturday, there will be nine crew members aboard. Here's the current crew as we see them on board today, September 24th. From the top left, we have commander of the International Space Station, Alexei Ovchinin. Uh, going clockwise, we have Nick Haig of NASA. Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency, Alexander Svortsov of Roscosmos, Drew Morgan of NASA, and Christina Cook of NASA. They are now aboard the International Space Station towards the end of their workday. It'll be Christina Cook at the helm of the robotic arm this Saturday. She'll be leading the operations for capturing HTV as it makes its approach to the International Space Station. Launching tomorrow aboard the uh, Soyuz vehicle on MS-15 will be three new crew members. They include NASA's Jessica Mir, Alex Gripochka of Roscosmos, and Haza Ali Al-Mansouri of the United Arab Emirates. Yes, These so. three, crew, three crew members will be launching tomorrow morning Central Time. You can tune into the NASA TV to see their launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. So the um, they'll rendezvous um, quickly. They'll do a four-orbit rendezvous um, to catch up with the International Space Station and dock to the Russian side of the station later in the evening. The docking schedule at 2:45 p.m. Central Time. Again, there'll be nine crew members aboard. There's the Soyuz MS-15. You can see at the aft end of the station. They'll be joining the six crew members aboard, so make nine total, and they'll do an eight-day handover. 
Alexei Ovchinin, Nick Haig, and Haza Ali Al Mansori will board the Soyuz MS 12 on uh, October 3rd and um, make their way down to the Kazakh Ten steppes. Minutes. Ten minutes left. Six crew members of Expedition 61 will continue throughout the rest of the calendar year. Now again, there will be nine crew members on board the International Space Station when HTV arrives with Christina Cook at the controls of the station's robotic arm to grab the four tons of cargo. Three crew members will depart on October 3rd and Expedition 61 will take over upon the time of undocking and here is your Expedition 61 crew from left to right. We have NASA's Andrew Morgan, Alexander Sportsov of Roscosmos, Luca Parmitano of the European Space Agency, and then joining uh, here tomorrow will be Alex Kropocha and Jessica Mir. And to round out the Expedition 61 crew, uh, her long duration stay, almost uh, 11 months long, will be Christina Cook. She is staying up there long. She might even break the, the record f uh, set by... Um, what was it? Like the long duration uh Pengu Whitson had a long duration stay, I believe, so Or did she break the in total? Oh man. Uh It has been a long time, by the way, since I've last streamed, so yeah. I know not a lot of people are watching, but probably you Nine will catch up. Nine minutes to launch so. at this time. HTV-8 on the top of the H-2B vehicle, launch vehicle, that's lifting off from the Yoshinobu launch complex of Tanagashima. In nine minutes. I believe. Let me check my Twitter thread. Now just eight minutes to launch, counting down to 11.05 a.m. Central, 1.05 a.m. September 25th, Japan time for the launch. Again, it's about 15 minutes from the time of liftoff to the time that the H2 transfer vehicle is separated from the launch vehicle. Yes. Going through go, some go, of the go. flight sequence after liftoff, the uh, solid rocket boosters and that first stage containing liquid fuel uh, will burn for 1 minute 54 seconds until the solid rocket boosters themselves burn out. They'll be jettisoned in pairs. Uh, there's four strap-on boosters divided by solid rocket boosters A and B. They'll separate in pairs about uh, three seconds apart from each other. First pair will jettison about uh, two minutes, four seconds, and then two minutes, seven seconds into the flight. That second pair will jettison as that first stage continues to carry the HTV uh, up into orbit. That first stage will burn for a total of five minutes and 47 seconds. And when the vehicle is at a fair enough altitude, uh, at about 3 minutes 40 seconds, the fairing itself will jettison and reveal the HTV vehicle underneath. Here's a nice uh, countdown of the flight sequence. Again, 5 minutes 47 seconds is when that first stage will cut off. It'll enter a short coast period of about 7 seconds before that first stage separates from the vehicle. The second stage ignites just after six minutes into the flight and carries it for uh, another eight minutes and 19 seconds. Now after the second stage cuts off, uh, there will be another short coast period 
before that second stage physically separates from the HTV vehicle. And that separation occurring just, just about 15 minutes after liftoff. Once the HTV is in a good orbit, we'll confirm that the HTV's solar panels that are um, along the outside of the vehicle are receiving good power. And then HTV uh, control over in Scuba, Japan will take over the flight of the vehicle for the next few days until it's rendezvous to the International Space Station That's this Saturday cool morning. looking rocket. I'm actually building the launch pad for the H2, uh, well, the H2 rocket family in general. So, now 11 a.m. Central Time, 1 a.m. out of the pad, that. five minutes until launch. So the he mentioned the jettison of the, the boosters, and it is quite uh, inventive what they thought of because the you have three girders connecting the boosters to the rocket so one diagonal and two uh, horizontal ones while separating the two horizontals are like a nice pan uh, of the vehicle that broken. fairing up at the top the white fairing underneath is the HTV 8 they vehicle and the four tons of cargo anymore. inside so what happens is the rocket pounds of which is lithium ion batteries and, and associated with adapter plates on the pallet that will be retrieved robotically from the off. outside and the rest will be cargo on the inside retrieved by the crew. This includes many experiments as well as uh, some hardware tools and food. Some of the tools inside include special spacewalking tools. Uh, that will be used for the alpha magnetic, magnetic spectrometer repair that will be scheduled later in Expedition Seriously. 61. What is this? Those tools specially designed to work with such a delicate piece of hardware. Okay. Oh, okay. There's also the um, oxygen and nitrogen tanks, some specialized hardware for the water recovery system, as well as the treadmill. Here you go. Again, in the pressurized compartment of the vehicle, about 5,000 pounds of cargo. So, yeah. Mission Control Houston, following along from the milestones provided by the HTV Control and Takasaki Range Control over at the Tanagashima Space Center that are overseeing the launch. Everything still on track for a launch just three minutes from now. So what you'll first see is sparklers uh, at the bottom, then the engines fire, a bit like the space shuttle, and then hopefully we should see a booster ignition and then it just rockets away. I don't know if the skies the are clear, international but space station, if they are, you uh, can passing see over it for the Atlantic Ocean, now crossing uh, over into the country of the continent of Africa, the uh, southern border of the country of Liberia. It's on a northeastern track and will be located over Africa at the time of launch. Launch being over uh, at the east at one of the southern islands of Japan. You can see there on this map. Everything's still on track from here in Mission Control Houston and out of the Range Control Center and HTV Control. Less than two minutes to launch. Go, go, go. Pretty orange tank. <laughs> the engines they use are, are quite uh, powerful and useful as well because they're liquid hydrogen and uh, liquid oxygen engines, uh, but they provide quite a bit of thrust. It is pretty good engine. One minute until launch. Go, go, Everything go. looking good so far. 
ち上げ1分前です。T マイナス1ミリ。30 seconds to launch. Again, the solid rocket boosters and that core stage, the first stage containing liquid fuel, will carry the rocket through the first 1 minute 54 seconds of its launch. Everything's still on track. 10 seconds to launch. Let's get a good view of the engine underneath. There we go. Now、Ignition. igniting. Yes. Throttle up. Go. There we go. Zero and lift off. That lifts off. The HTV-8 to the HTV-2B rocket carrying its way. Four tons of cargo to the International Space Station. Go go go. Lighting up the night sky over southern Japan. Everything looking good through the flight so far. Those four strap on solid rocket boosters will carry the vehicle through the first one minute 54 seconds of the launch. Now, one minute into the flight. Hold up. Okay. No! Twenty more seconds before those solid rocket boosters burn out. Everything looking good so far. The vehicle itself、uh, heading towards the southeast to get in the right phasing to meet up with the International Space Station. I think literally, Mark, what happened is my、uh, stream just collapsed again. You see the solid rocket boosters、uh, beginning、oh, to、go. burn out. Burn out. We should see them separate in pairs coming up here in just a few seconds.、Uh... That should be pair one. There's the first pair of solid rocket boosters separating. And there's a second pair. Yes, second and、pair. the second pair. Now that core stage will continue to burn until five minutes forty-seven seconds into the flight, burning liquid fuel, liquid hydrogen, and liquid oxygen. Good confirmation of booster separation. Two minutes forty-seven seconds into the flight, three minutes left of this first stage. Ah,、uh, there we go. One tiny spot. <laughs> What's that? The fairing. Oh, if that was the fairing, I'm happy I saw it. Now we have to wait for three minutes forty-seven seconds into the flight.、Oh, no, Everything no, looking good so far. That first stage will continue to burn for another two minutes.
4 minutes 47 seconds into the flight, 1 minute left of this stage. Everything continue to be on track throughout the, the flight of the uh, HTV today and the H2B rocket performing nominally. So Again, 5 minutes it. 47 seconds into the flight will be the cutoff of that first stage. It'll enter into a 7 second uh, coast period before the first and second stage separates. Another 7 seconds until the second stage is ignited. Everything continuing to be on track. 5 minutes 27 seconds into the flight, 20 more seconds of the first stage burning. Clear skies, uh, quite, quite good. There we go. It got dark, cut off. Switching to animation right after the burnout of that first stage. Separation. And hopefully we'll have ignition. There we go, ignition. Now we wait 10 more minutes. So yeah, I don't even know if... And confirmation that that first stage did successfully cut off, second stage burning now. First and second step stages separated. This second stage will burn for well over eight minutes, eight minutes, 19 seconds. I got a 3D printer today, so yeah. It'll be uh, just over 15 minutes until the HTV itself is inserted into a good orbit. Oh man. Coming up on seven so minutes into the flight, badly. everything looking okay, good I'll so go far. See you later. Eight minutes into the flight, HTV continuing on a nominal track heading towards the southeast to get into the right phasing to meet up with the International Space Station, which is just about to cross over into an orbital nighttime as it crosses over the Mediterranean Sea towards the western coast of Greece. Meanwhile, the HTV heading on a southeasterly course over the Pacific Ocean to get into a good orbit. Again, it's about 15 minutes from the time of liftoff to the time of orbital insertion, and the HTV separates from the launch vehicle. Was it last launch or was it even a launch before that, that they could actually see the HTV launch from space? Pretty cool. Now it's doing a sort of dog-like maneuver. The uh, pictures on Japanese things, so like the, the 3D version you see, is actually uh, telemetry driven. I don't think the other uh, line is, but uh, like the, the other picture, but this one is real. Um, 
it's it's not pre-programmed because you can see it adjusting um, once every so often. So it it is real time data driven. I know for sure. Ten minutes into the flight, that second stage continuing to burn as expected. Everything on track as the HTV makes its way through its ascent milestones. There are only a few milestones left. That second stage burns for uh, well over eight minutes total. We're now ten minutes into the flight. We could expect a cutoff about 14 minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. It'll enter into a short coast period. That coast lasting uh, just about 51 seconds before there's physical separation between the HTV and the second stage of the H2B rocket. Oh, why do I get the mobile thing? Well, HTB just launched um, tomorrow. At what time are you launching Soyuz? Oh, at four my time. Oh, uh, okay. That will be enough. Uh, for no, that will be just eleven minutes thirty seconds into the flight. I get off school. HTV That's eight bummer. and the second stage of the vehicle performing Otherwise nominally. I could have hosted that one too, but no, maybe I'll do something Less with three docking. minutes until the second stage cuts off and the vehicle enters a short coast period. Again, the phasing here gets it uh, into an orbit to catch up with the ultimate destination of HTV-8, the International Space Station, where it will arrive on Saturday morning, capture scheduled for 6.15 a.m. Central Time. The International Space Station itself crossing over into an orbital nighttime now just north of the Black Sea over the southern border of Ukraine. Go, go, go. Go, HTV. That's quite fast right now. It's on, it's 6.8 kilometers per second. 6.9. Almost in orbit. 13 minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Everything, everything looking good so far for under that second stage. Expect a cutoff just under a minute from now. Again, after that cutoff, it'll enter into a short coast period before the physical separation between the HTV and the second stage. There we go. Almost. 40 minutes. 10 seconds into the flight. Should expect Four, to cut off here in just three, a few seconds. Two, one, cut off. Hey, I timed that exactly. <laughs> oh, point. Uh, so, 40 more seconds. From out 40 until separation.
Second stage has cut off. Now just waiting for confirmation of physical separation between the HTV and the second stage. Five, four, three, two, one. Separation. Hey, time there correctly again. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I believe. And confirmation of separation. Applause for the Japanese for another successful launch. Getting a look at HTV control over in Scuba, Japan. A good flight of the vehicle. Out there, see the Looking back pad. at the launch pad where the H2B rocket took off uh, just 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that's it. So uh, thank you for watching. And uh, as always, well, like, subscribe. The mission control over in Scuba Japan will take over the flight from here. Now that the HTV has separated from the launch vehicle. And yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter. And there's HTV control over in Scuba Japan. Just recently, we saw the Launch Control Center. That's the Takasaki Range Control Center over in Tanagashima. This HTV control center over in Scuba Japan, just northeast of Tokyo. Yeah. If there aren't any questions anymore. I see that people are watching. It'll be these teams here that'll see through the flight of no HTV over the next few days room, to rendezvous so yeah. with the station early Saturday morning. Sorry for my OBS problems. I don't know what is actually happening. Um, I th I believe it has to do with the now that HTV has physically separated. Windows gave me just waiting for confirmation that the uh, vehicle itself is drawing power in a good configuration after separation. And HTV mission control will take over from there. Yeah, so we had a successful launch, finally, uh, after the fire halted, whole, uh, actually prevented the launch from happening. Uh, beginning of the week, I believe. Uh, no, that was actually two weeks ago, because it was on the 10th, and it is now the 14th, uh, of 24th, so that's 14 days ago. Um... So yeah, we have a, hopefully have a, uh, gra uh, they grab the HTV uh, on Saturday and then we have docking a few hours later. Why on Saturday? Well, uh, tomorrow another Soyuz with uh, three crew members are going, uh, going up and uh, they have to reserve uh, a date for uh, what well, a specific slot because they uh, are planning on doing a two hour uh, no four orbit so Again, six hours at the HTV rendezvous. flight control room over in scuba Japan and if they uh, these teams will oversee docking. the flight of HTV on its route uh, in low earth orbit to catch up with the International Space Station or if they have an, uh, a sort of issue they need to work out while going to the station, they will automatically refer to a two-hour day rendezvous profile. So instead of uh, Wednesday docking, that will be Friday. Uh, so planning the HTV in between that wouldn't work. So yeah, that's why uh, they dock on Saturday instead of uh, in two days. So that would be uh, instead of Thursday because... That is actually in the window of um, the Soyuz docking thing. So that would be just be too many things going on uh, and they can't have two uh, things dock at the same time. So yeah, that's why. Uh, the H2V, uh, well, this this one's actually bringing up another, another set of batteries for the ISS, which is going to be, uh, well, the batteries are going to swap, be swapped out. So these are lithium-ion batteries, and the other ones are uh, nickel-hydrogen. And uh, these are newer. They swap them out. Um, and then with, the, with this one, uh, when it burns up, it has the... Um, well, it takes the old batteries with with it. 
I don't know if they're gonna have a re-entry capsule again, like they had on the last flight. I didn't read the, uh, like, what's in the, uh, in this space capsule. But again, I believe the HTV mission they control might try. Center over in Scuba, Japan. That's uh, just northeast of the major city of Tokyo, the center island. So yeah, if the uh, hopefully I don't know how long they're gonna stream yet, but this is my my end of the stream. And if there are any questions, still leave them still, because I'm uh, otherwise I'm gonna leave it and uh, see you maybe tomorrow on the docking. Should I do docking of the Soyuz? Well, I'll see if I have time. Um, I'll let you know on Twitter what I'm going to do with it. And yeah, I'll get back to building my 3D printer. Um, thank you for watching. And as always, see you in the next stream, which is probably, if I don't do the docking tomorrow, it is going to be... Uh, let me see. October. Oh man, that's two weeks from now. And receive confirmation that the HTV is in a good orbital insertion, is drawing power from those solar rays, and it's on its way to meet up with the International good. Space Station in just a few days. Good, good. So yeah, save mission. A short recap of today's activities way. launching on time in 11.05 a.m. Central Time. Made a nominal ascent over 15 minutes before it was separated and entered into orbit. Teams here at the uh, HTV Mission Control Center in Scuba, Japan will oversee the flight of HTV as it makes its way around the Earth. Uh, now over the South Pacific Ocean, east off the coast of Australia after entering into orbit. It'll continue to orbit the Earth for the next few days until it rendezvous with the International Space Station at 6.15 a.m. scheduled time, Central Time, on Saturday, uh, September 28th. It'll be Christina Cook at the controls of the station's robotic arm to physically grab the HTV as it makes its way to its capture position, flying uh, in tandem with the International Space Station. Sure. And robotics controllers will take over at, after that to install it onto the International Space Station. Before that happens, though, there'll be three new crew members launching and arriving aboard the International Space Station, a total of nine crew members aboard the space station by the time HTV arrives on Saturday. Be sure to tune in to the launch of Jessica Mir, Oleg Skripochka, and Haza Ali Almansori tomorrow morning. We'll start our coverage at 8 a.m. Central Time for the launch at 8.57 a.m. Central. They'll be launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Make a four-orbit rendezvous to dock with the International Space Station in the afternoon U.S. time. We'll start our coverage then at 2 p.m., looking for a 2.45 p.m. docking. And then we'll start the welcome ceremony and hatch opening at uh, 4 p.m. Central Time, where the three crew members aboard this will use MS-15. will be greeted by the six crew members currently um, part of Expedition 60. After you tune into that coverage, make sure you see the completion of HTV's arrival to the International Space Station. We'll start our coverage uh, just before 5 a.m. Central Time, again looking at a capture time at uh, 6.15 a.m. A great uh, insertion of HTV into orbit. Again, teams in HTV's Mission Control Center in SCUBA will take over from here, working closely with the International Space Station Flight Control Room here in Houston, Texas, uh, where HTV will eventually join its ultimate destination, the International Space Station. Until then, this is Mission Control Houston. Well, that was my coverage as well, so... Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh...
thank you for watching and see you in the next stream so yeah thanks bye